Hey guys, so I got contacted by Yumi DG if I want to review one of their smartwatches and yeah, I said yes. If it's an interesting device, I will yeah, show it. And they didn't want to tell me which device I will get and it got uh, or I got the U-Watch 3. I already made one video about the U-Watch 2 a while ago and I guess they came to me that uh, for, for that reason. Yeah, and now they sent me the Yumi DG U-Watch 3 and you all know what type of reviews I like and yeah, it's a teardown review we will do. So unfortunately it turned out I already had two of their U-Watch 3 smartwatches and I did already made a tier on of them to see how good they are yeah reflash able and it's not very simple so you can see here I drilled holes in it to look into it with some acupuncture needles and to hook the SVD port that way up but yeah let's do the review of the Yumi DG U Watch 3 and yeah, it's full touch. It has 240 by 240 pixels. It has an NRF 52840 and external, I think, 16 mega megabytes of flash. And the one guy already did uh, uh, an Esperino port to it. So there is already a custom firmware available and the pinout and yeah, such stuff. I will link the yeah, GitHub repo in the description. It's from Quastopil, if I remember that correct. But yeah, let's see how good it is to open. To open it up, I will use one hot air station. We'll set it to about um, 350 degrees. We also need some kind of plier or cutter, however it is called. I will leave the hot air laying here and we need to get out the push button on this side. From the other watch I know it is yeah, quite easily broken, so let's try. We can just close the tweezer and hopefully it doesn't break too much. It's now out. And whoops, here we have the pin and it looked like it worked very well. So nothing is broken so far. We can see later if on the inside something is yeah, broken. Here's a spring inside from inside of it. Now I will simply heat up the watch itself to get this corner around um, apart and the next thing is then to get the display away. So I will just heat a bit around. We'll do that for a while. Let's see if it's hot enough, but it doesn't feel like. No, that's far too cold. Let's make the airflow a bit higher and try again. The hardest part on the opening is really the push button as it is very likely that it gets de destroyed or doesn't hold in the yeah, plug anymore. And that way 
it's still kind of defective after opening it up. So it's now kind of warm. And yeah, I will try to get my fingernail or a knife under the, the corner piece. And we can see it gets apart. And now you also know why I do have so, so long fingernails, because you can get into stuff quite easily. So we'll not do it on the other side as well. I think I need to reheat it. So this is why over the air hack able smartwatches are so nice as you can yeah just turn them on reflash them with any good tool and yeah you don't need to touch them at all so let's see if it's better now because also one part is to open the watch up and the other part is to close it again after it's open so we have quite a good Um, slot in it right now and I try to get it further apart with a tweezer but it feels like not only the co the corner part comes apart but also the main display which should not happen at this state normally but maybe it's glued more on this one ah, okay now the corner part comes apart better so if I now push here I can feel that only the corner gets yeah, pulled up like this and the display is still attached to yeah to the base yeah I will reheat it a bit we'll turn the airflow up again and just go slowly around the corners yeah but it's really hard to open it up the watch is quite cheap at around 33 euros but with uh, that much hassle to open it up it's just too too much work and there are better possibilities or better yeah watches so that was clearly a good amount of heat now and I will yeah just pull it further apart so it seems like a bit of damage is already done at the button but it's quite quite good still so we have finally the corner ring part away and now we can see that the display is just laying on top of this yeah this rest of the case and we can 
quite simple get into it with a knife it's uh, important to not go too deep into it because the display is then of course coming after a few millimeters but yeah let's try to not cut myself so it really needs to be between the last glass and um, plastic part and I really need to use a lot of force right now so there definitely would be a bit of heat not a bad thing so but I'm slowly also getting under it and if the first is done I'm using my fingernails to yeah get into it and yeah go around one time to then finally pull the display itself out like this and now it's also possible to disconnect the display and to get it uh, fully apart so we are now yeah completely in the watch inside of it we can see here the yeah touch controller the display here is the external flash we have uh, the accelerometer yeah one of it uh, maybe the other one is a charging chip i'm not sure right now and we can also get out the pcb itself and take a look under it so there's one screw and we should be able to yeah get it out like this and there we have yeah the nrf n52 eight four zero and yeah i'm just seeing this is yeah also labeled at the test points but also this version is the one with internal gps this yeah is is new to me nice <laughs> the other ones here didn't have the internal gps if i remember correctly so if we open the already broken one up we should be able to see that it's not with internal gps so here is if it's open up one time it's quite easy to get it apart another time yeah and we can cl clearly see that here the nrf is on the top side and not like here on the bottom side so that's strange yeah okay i should have read the description it's the uwatch 3 gps and not the standard uwatch nice addition yeah so now you know how to open it up and what i will check as well now is if the button still holds in its place so if i pull plug it plug it in if i can pull it out easily and no it's quite hard in there so that really worked but now it's coming apart so maybe there is something needed to hold it back in if the watch is needed to assemble it again. Hey, so future me here. So it turned out I missed this little piece. It's a small spring-loaded washer which will get clamped while the push button is inserted. And if we assemble the border already, we can, yeah, with the spring of course, put the push button in and 
yeah, make the spring-loaded washer pop back on again. And then the push button will hold very tightly and as original intended. And then you can still insert the display again and you will have a fully functioning watch again. Here is also a close-up view of the of all the damage, we must say. It's not very much to not lose the button if you are somewhere on the road. And yeah, thank you for watching. It's a bit of a long video, but yeah, thanks UmiDG for sending it in. The GPS is a nice addition to the already quite small and cheap watch. And yeah, as mentioned, it's hackable. The Asperino firmware version is will be linked in the description. And yeah, shout out to Quasto Pill for the reversing of it. Bye.